Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you once again for tuning into our much anticipated uh, session today, okay, on GLIP. All right. So uh, today we will be going into a very uh, interesting angle of how we look into GLIP. And if you have been following us, uh, we have had a series about this and how it helps different parts of the body. So today uh, we will be uh, talking about disruptor, all right, because we know of how to increase um, GLP-1, right? So are there any factor that would potentially uh, destruct it? Okay, and making our own GLP-1 levels uh, in not sustainable level, all right, or not desirable. All right, so let's, uh, without any further ado, let's go right into it. Okay, so just giving everybody an overview about uh, the state of this GLP-1 medication, okay, which is the new wave of medication that's been introduced into the market. So uh, these are the latest report from JP Morgan. So they are doing a projection. And I, I don't think these figures are very surprising, but you can only see a steady and a very sharp increase of potential uh, market share for this new class of medication, okay, which is uh, what we call GLP-1 agonist. So now we are in this season already so now eventually because uh because of the high cost and everything but eventually these drug companies will work into doing more commercial penetration it's already out there anyway but they're going to do more aggressive marketing and they will start to include all this authentic medication as part of insurance coverage so once this thing is included as part of what we can all claim for insurance definitely the usage of this will be a lot more higher and um, I think the ethical issues behind it will also be reduced. So the trend and the upward trend of this medication is only going to increase. All right. And you see the potential, you know, growth from here. Uh, we are now 7.6, but eventually it may go up to 44 billion. All right. In terms of this whole GLP-1 market share for this drug. Okay. So it has tremendous potential. So what is leading them to forecast such a high amount of sales. Okay, these are forecasted amount. Okay, this is not actual sales, but still, you know, for JP Morgan to come with this kind of statistics means that they have a lot of confidence. All right, so what make them so convinced that these are the numbers that we'll foresee in the future? Okay, that's because, all right, individuals who have significantly lesser JLP1 uh, is quite a number of people, right? So there are two major groups of people who will have lesser GLP-1 in their bodies. Okay, obesity, those who already have a weight loss, uh, sorry, have weight, overweight issues, okay, uh, they find that these people existingly in their body have lesser GLP-1. So now because of how complex obesity is, they are now classifying it as a disease, you know. It's no longer a state of your body, all right, like you're overweight or whatever. It's not just a state of your weight, but now, you know, clinicians are saying that looks like it can actually, it is actually a disease on its own. Already. Okay, so we've already moved to that from a physical appearance to, you know, to a state, busy state. Again, especially for those who are type 2 diabetes. So this is what we go, went through past few weeks where we have learned, all right, uh, those before type 2 diabetes happen, a lack of GLP-1 has already happened. Okay, so once a person has less GLP-1, they are highly likely to also develop type 2 diabetes. Okay? So like I said, uh, the data I showed you just now, of course, it just uh, show a lot about the global market share of uh, in all these medication. But there's a good reason why uh, there's a huge need, okay? Because that two group of people that I told you just now about over obesity and diabetes is actually a lot in the world. So as you can see here, uh, the US population, of course, I think one of their biggest health challenges and their social challenges really is the overweight issue. Okay, uh, I think it come, in terms of their stature, uh, they are a lot more bigger than us and it's quite a relevant issue. All right? U.S. obesity and overweight is 69%, you know. We're talking about more than half the population, really. So it's close to 70% that you go to the street, 10 people, 7 people are already obesity and overweight, right? So this is the world we are going into. 
And if we were to break into classes, okay, obesity and overweight is about the same percentage, 36 to 33 percent. Okay, so this is what we are seeing in, uh, you know, in the States. How about here, okay, Southeast Asia? So talk about Malaysia first. Okay, in Malaysia, we are also catching up in the numbers, all right? As you can see here, we are 50 percent, all right, in terms of if you combine both overweight and obesity. And if we were to break it down, the overweight percentage is actually the same as the U.S. population, you know. Okay, so we cannot say people like very, very bad. We are catching up. So right, our figures are about the same. But obesity is slightly lower. But I think with the way we are, it can go up any time. All right, and interestingly, they also given some data. So uh, it's particularly high in women, 54.7%. And especially those who are uh, middle age, okay, middle age women, uh, they are even higher. Lah. The rates are 60%. And now we're also moving into a trend where children, okay, age 5 to 17, lah, are also uh, 30% are older. Okay, so these are quite worrisome trends that we are seeing now in, in Malaysia. Okay, so this is uh, some of the very common cities in the world, all right, surrounding this region. So Malaysia is the highest, okay, Brunei catching up pretty closely. So Singapore is actually the fifth, right? It's also not too far behind. Uh, but this is something I added in because we don't have enough space. But most of the countries nearby, you know, they are all neighboring countries and they are all in the top five list of the highest um, overweight uh, obesity prevalence. Okay, and these are some of the factors and you can see that now uh, it is really becoming a big issue. So the problem about GLP-1, it's actually a real problem. Okay, it's a real problem and many people are facing issues about having to manage their own weight issues. Okay, so of course, what made GLP-1 grow up, you know, you know, uh, all these drugs, okay, uh, is made available to these people because of its high cost. So eventually, when all these drugs become, there are more generic solutions that come in, I'm sure it will come into the Malaysian market and it will also affect you know, a lot of people around us in this region as well. Okay, so it's already a lot of traction and it's a matter of time that it will also affect uh, our region here. Okay, so this is just some data in the States talking about how many people are injecting this, okay, and it's the high number. All right. Okay, so why we have to talk about this topic today? Because it is very difficult to increase GLP-1. All right. First of all, it's not a nutrient. Okay, we cannot obtain this directly from food. Uh, it is a hormone. So you cannot consume hormone like that, right? The only way is actually just through injection. So that is really a big challenge. And it has a very short lifespan. So GLP-1, it only lasts two to four minutes as we eat. Then after that, it just disappears. Okay, so because of this, it's very hard to retain natural GLP-1 in our bodies. And as I mentioned, okay, drugs are the only direct route of GLP-1, but they are man-made. And the best way, of course, is to increase our own GLP-1 naturally through the gut. Okay, this is the only way that our body can produce more GLP-1. So we have to try to get the right ingredients that we can stimulate uh, the L cells to produce more of this GLP-1. Okay, because as you can see with the statistics, okay, many people don't have enough that. So the solution is to, um, of course, feel great. We need to increase our baseline level of GLP-1, right? Okay, so now we have another, uh, I wouldn't say enemy, la, but we have another worry to think about. Because increasing GLP-1 is really so difficult, you know. We can still eat it, but there are so many other factors that's beyond our control. They can further impair the already less amount of GLP-1 in our body. Okay, so what is the major reason that this is also the reason why people cannot have high GLP-1? It is really this. Okay, inflammation. Uh, surprise, not surprise, but as I go into this, uh, even though inflammation is a topic that we have heard about many, many times, right? But we don't really understand it. What does this word got to do with so many processes in our body? People always talk about inflammation, right? But what is actually so serious about it? Okay? So I want to give you all a bit of an education okay, about what is this purpose of inflammation and how it can even affect our GLP-1 level. 
Okay, so of course we need to know uh, what is what is the purpose of information. So actually, this is itself not a bad process. Okay, it is something that our body will naturally trigger whenever there is a impending wound, or if you fell down, or if there's something that happened to your body. Okay, it is a body's process to signal and to start wound healing. The main function is to get rid of harmful bacteria, viruses, and dying tissues. So we have to eliminate all these things. On, okay, once they stay in our body for too long, it becomes toxic. All right. So inflammation helps to heal injuries by increasing blood flow. So you will see the area will be uh, later. Okay, whatever area like that you cut, bruise, or whatever. So it will encourage more of these healing nutrients to go onto the spot to perform its healing function, and of course for our white blood cell to uh, attack all these and get rid of all these uh, harmful substances. Right, so of course, in the midst of all this, you can see this white color are actually our white blood cell. So the thing we have to pay attention to is that when inflammation becomes bad, right? So when it becomes bad, so one of the, so to look at this is actually the normal state of our body. So by right, okay, this is an anti-inflammatory state, means it's normal, by right, everything here is okay, all right, it looks pretty normal, right? But an imbalance happens when, okay, when there's too much fat cell, all right, uh, too much issue with uh, fat problem. And you can see fat cell, one thing it does is it attracts a lot of white blood cell. Okay, it triggers a lot of white blood cell to come to the side. And what it tends to do is it will start to attack your blood vessel. Okay, white blood cell, okay, all these things will start to crowd around this area. And white blood cell will attack your blood vessel and then it will then penetrate your blood vessel and it will go into okay, where various parts of the body. So actually white blood cell is not a bad one. It's something that's very, very important for all of us. But the only problem is that when there are things in our body that is leading all these white blood cells to come inside, this is when it becomes a problem. Okay, so the issue here we have to manage is that when inflammation doesn't turn off as it should. Okay? And this can prolong inflammation. We're not talking about short term. Okay, this is long term inflammation. Okay, that can lead to years. And 75 to 90% of human diseases are related to stress and inflammation, including most cardiovascular, metabolic disease, and neurodegenerative disorder. So if you ask me, um, this is actually quite a big statistic because you can even look at cancer and things like that. But the percentage, you know, is 75 to 90%, you know. So it indicates that inflammation is a lot more serious than we once perceived. Okay, because as you can see, it comes here, it can go to areas it shouldn't and start to attack different parts of the body. Okay, so what is the cause of inflammation? Okay, and uh, these are some of the big causes of inflammation that uh, is very much beyond our control. Okay, especially when we're moving into this new developmental state, the world. So one of the biggest concerns right now is microplastics, okay? So I'm not too sure if uh, you all have seen this popular article that's been circulating about Malaysia being the first in the world consuming microplastics, okay? So uh, I used to think that issues like this are like not very important one, you know, because it's like, you know, who cares? All right, but now they are already mainstream media talking about and proving that Malaysians are eating the most microplastic. So we cannot run away from the truth. Lah. You know, as much as you try to deny it, you don't think that pollution environment poses a threat. Okay, it's not like whatever disease that happened inside, right? The truth is it is already proven and it's a lot more real than you think. Okay, and of course our food is also already contaminated with a lot of inflammatory agents, okay, antibiotic introduction. Uh, and of course, the source of oil being used, food source and things like that. Okay, so dietary source is also a source of inflammation and of course, stress levels, right? And stress actually plays a big part in the worsening of whatever situation. Okay, if you're talking about your stroke, if you're talking about uh, arteriosclerosis, okay, everything has to do with stress. So they all interrelate uh, one another. 
Okay, so one part I want to talk a lot about is inflammation happening, especially in the gut. Okay, uh, I want to bring a bit more attention into this because uh, it relate to our topic today. So why is this so important that we have to keep note? All right, especially inflammation is like oh okay, something I know for ten years already, but why should I pay attention about this? Okay, so you see this. This is the picture of a normal gut. Okay, this is a normal tight junction gut cell, and this is a leaky and inflamed. So this is if you are healthy. Okay, if your gut cell is very healthy and it's in a good state, uh, all these other things up here, right? All these other bacteria, they cannot come in anymore. But right, it should be like that. But once your gut is compromised, right, and once your gut is not being properly nourished and you don't have the right nutrients to nourish your gut cell, right, then all these white blood cell and all these uh, bacteria or whatever, they can leak into our intestine. So our intestine, once they leak into, they can go into our bloodstream very easily. Really. Or then you will just go to every part of the body. Okay, so this security immune complex can affect uh, affect our brain, inflammation, autoimmunity, malabsorption, and nutrient deficiency. So this is actually one of the major causes behind a lot of unexplained illnesses or discomfort that we face today. Okay, so without the gut microbiome, it's very difficult to survive. It is very hard to live in this world. Why? Okay, that's because it has some several important functions because the gut produces 95% of serotonin in the body. So serotonin is a very important happy hormone for our brain. So, okay, there's a lot of science behind it, but I mean, it's a very big percentage. Now, all right? And the gut is the largest immune organ, okay? Jeng is the gut, okay? It's the largest immune organ in the body, so it has the most immune cells, so we have to take good care of it. And an imbalanced gut microbiome is associated with all these um, metabolic issues, like obesity, insulin, type 2. And of course, our gut is where GLP-1 is made, okay? It's where GLP-1 is made. So all your L-cell, right? If you've got inflammation, it can destroy the L-cell in your gut. And once you start to destroy the L-cell, your body cannot produce the GLP-1 as it should, okay? So that's why gut is very important. Okay, a lot more important than we once believed. Lah. So all these things are issues that we, on our day-to-day -day basis, that we will face, okay? That can pose a threat to disrupting our normal GLP-1 levels. Okay, so what's the verdict? Okay, of course, GLP, increasing that is very important. If you take your unit market and biosac as you can increase it, okay, the more the better. Okay, but if you just increase without safeguarding against all these disruptors, we are going to go back to square one. Okay, you can still increase, but it will not be as high as it should. No? So I think it's important that we have some of this basic nutrition to help us to navigate through this better, right? For long-term stability and the longevity of GLP-1, we need to ensure that inflammation stays low, okay? It has to be as low as we can, as we can see with all the graph just now, how it can affect our body, right? So other nutrients can help to bring the inflammation low as soon as soon as possible. Okay, so what are the solutions? Uh, so today, I will not spend too much time on field grade. I will just talk about it briefly. But I want to talk about some other supplementary uh, nutrients that are really important. Okay, the more I do this presentation, the more I realize how important it is. Okay, and uh, as much as field grade is great, it's the most basic thing that we need. But we cannot survive with just that long-term one. Okay, if you look at our health-wise or so, we need to have other supplements to help us to really get everything in control. All right, to have the full picture of optimal health. Okay, so let's go through this quickly. All right, so increase GLP-1 level, this is the objective, and nutrients to combat inflammation is the most sustainable way for us to have long-term GLP-1. Okay, so of course, as we spoke about, okay, 80 to 90%, all right, of GLP-1 produced in the gut. Okay, so we have to pay extra attention to this and feel great help us to achieve this. Okay, so for our eating window, Bioslug S, how does this help our gut? Okay, so um, studies show that uh, L cell produces GLP-1 with this thing called short-chain fatty acid. Okay, you have to undergo a fermentation process to produce this thing called SCFA. All right, so it's a special kind of cell and the gut will then switch on GLP-1 signal in the brain. 
So it actually com communicates with the brain as well. And this SCFA is something that's very important. Okay, and not all fiber can do this function. Okay, the only one that can really do it is high quality fiber, which is what you can find in Bath Life S. Okay, soluble fiber. And in an hour or two, after eating a no fiber meal, GLP-1 levels in our blood can drop very drastically. So it's very important that we have to keep taking enough of this so our baseline levels will always have a good amount of short chain fatty acid. Okay, so these are the testimonials that we have for those without and with uh, the fibers are able to reduce the blood sugar that's in our body. Okay, next for Unimate, of course, we have something to cover our main meals with the Balsaf S, okay? So now for our fasting window, we have this thing called Unimate to help us achieve high amount of GLP-1. Okay, so uh, Yeba Mate, this is our in-house study that we uh, are able to see close to double the amount of GLP-1 in Yeba Mate group compared to those who are only drinking water. Okay, so drink water, you may have this, but of course, if you have Yeba Mate, you have a lot more GLP-1 in your body. Okay, and this has been proven in our own study that we can show that, you know, if you compare to just water, you can have a lot more GLP-1. So, okay, the more Yeba Mate, you have more GLP-1. Right, so with our previous few sessions, we have already reinforced the importance of Yeba Mate and how it is able to increase it and together with Bas Life S, it is able to give us that combination to drive up our GLP-1. Alright, so we need to have this as our most basic step as we go into this uh, field grade. Okay, so now I want to go a bit more about this. Alright, I know it looks like a lot of products, but it's not really a lot. Okay, these are just some of our core products and um, it ties in very crucially with our topic today. Okay, so of course one is about detox. Okay, this is our flagship product. Okay, all these years is this. Okay, information, we have these three products and I have one good news I want to tell all our Malaysian friends. Okay, who are on this call. Uh, I know that uh, it's been a bit of a struggle for you to get Omega-3, right? Because... Uh, it's been it's already a global discontinuation. Uh, but right now we are able to source omega three. This one from Thailand. Okay, so uh, good news for everyone. So it means that everyone can at least have an omega three in their in their in their supplement lineup. Okay, it's quite an important nutrient, and we are glad that we're able to have this in. So uh, we're still waiting for news, but I think this will happen quite soon. Now. All right, uh, I can say within this month. Also, we can actually get this Omega-3 for our local Malaysian uh, customers. So, it's good news to tell you all, okay? This time, I can tell you it's pretty soon. And, um, yeah, so these are important updates I want to tell you. And the only thing is that uh, everything remains the same, okay? Formulation-wise, this uh, current one that you are taking from Thailand is the same, except that it's non-halal, okay? That's the only thing. All right, let's go into it. Okay, so pollution, environment, and food. So as you can see here, we're talking about pollution. It's not just only um, through the food. It's a lot of things like heavy metal, um, you know, the air, and all these are also areas that can affect our body. All right, so more and more evidence is increasing about the harmful effect of toxins in our body. Okay, so all these things, are there are more and more studies proving that it affects our health. So all these toxins are foreign objects, okay? They are not natural in our body. They are something that our body will try to remove it. It's like uh, something that our body will try to remove it because it's, it's not supposed to be there. So the only problem is that all these toxins are resistant to degradation, okay? Our body don't have the enzyme to dissolve plastic on them. So no choice all. If our body cannot dissolve all this plastic, it will just stay in our body. And same like all the the exhaust pipe, all those things that we smell every day, they actually stay in our lungs and stay in our fat tissue for a long time only. And our body has no way to remove it, okay? So all these uh, pose a big problem because uh, they have a very long half-life. Okay, we're talking about years and decades and uh, some of those plastic, those very solid ones, even take up to 100 years to dissolve. 
Okay, so imagine that all these things, not just only in the environment, okay, ladies and gentlemen, is already in our body. Okay, it's already in our body right now. Okay, so what we do if we don't take any action? Of course, you can don't do anything. Right? Okay, that's up to you. But if we don't do anything, our body will keep signaling information. Because for them, they, will, they don't know what's going on here, you know. You see, this is a foreign thing, our body, why is it there? So we keep asking the white blood cell to all go there. So a lot of white blood cells will accumulate trying to remove. But some of these toxins, they just won't go away. So that's how and why people can have all of all these autoimmune problems. Typical inflammation should only happen a couple of days or a few weeks. Okay, But these toxins, they stay very long in the body, especially those that accumulate in the fat cell. Okay, They actually can dissolve you know, in our fat cell. is like a cushion for all these heavy metal to come in. And they also make weight loss very difficult. Okay, they'll hold on to it and they make efforts to, to lose, lose that fat difficult. So, of course, our liver can do a really good job to uh, eliminate it. Uh. But with the current state we are living in, no, no, especially Malaysia being the number one microplastic, I don't think our liver can create it. <laughs> okay, we need something to really help us to uh, do this job better. Okay, so imagine the impact years and even decades on, on in the body. Okay? So that's the reason why we really advocate a lot on detoxification. So this is the impact of microplastic. Okay, as you can see here, immunity, okay, ah, uh, immunotoxicity is what I'm talking about. Alright, all the white blood cells will go to the toxic side and create a lot of problems. Okay, oxidative stress, okay, um gut microbiome and dysbiosis. So this can if all these toxins go to our gut, then it will affect Okay, our L cell, right? Um, and all these genes problem, okay, and all these and uh, every part of our body can be affected by microplastic. Okay, right. So this is where Clear Start Thirty comes into the picture. Okay, it plays a very important role, especially in today's society, to help us to help our liver also to better detox and to get rid of all these very stubborn kind of pollutants. Okay, so we have Huawei Plus, it removes toxin, parasite, and fungi. They can come from all these pollutants. Uh, and live fiber to really nourish the gut, okay, to lubricate it, to make it smooth, and especially in areas of protecting our gut. And of course, aloe vera and HST, that they help our body to have that consistent detoxification. All these waste cannot stay in the body. Right? That's why constipation is very bad. Okay, if you constipate more than two to three days, you are reabsorbing a lot of the nutrients back, the, the toxin a lot back into your bloodstream. Okay, so we need to make sure that our bowel movement is consistent all the time. So it's recommended to take it every four to six months. Okay, and next I want to stress this a bit more. Okay, I know that you are nearing 30 minute mark already, but I try to be as concise as possible because uh, this is also a very important area that I want to focus on. Okay, so low grade inflammation is a big factor in metabolic diseases like obesity and insulin resistance. Okay, in fact, our scientists personally say this. Okay, this is actually an angle that we have to talk about if we talk about GLP-1 because uh, it's a very big factor that will influence our insulin resistance. Okay, they are these are also nutritional support recommended for the long term and they are also important for other vital functions in the body. So they're important to send anti-inflammatory signal to the body so that it can switch off the inflammatory signal. Okay, so our body will switch on inflammation, right? If all these things is happening. So we need to have this to calm the body down. Okay, no, switch off, switch off. So the white blood cell will go to the correct place. Okay, not the wrong place. These nutrients can also build the natural production of GLP-1 and they are great in combination with few grades. Right, so I think this is a bonus and a plus point. And these are all supplements that you have to take regularly and daily. Okay, so the one thing I want to talk about, of course, is probiotics. Right, apart from just pre, you need the probiotic because it's also proven to increase insulin sensitivity and to reduce inflammatory markers. So all these things can also bring down inflammation. And study is also uh, coming to show that. All these probiotics have been found to increase the SCFA that we spoke about just now, producing bacteria and the SCFA itself, which is involved in GLP-1 production. So if you're taking free grade, I think 
taking a probiotic is a plus point. Okay, all these things can help to protect and further increase our GLP one. And next, I want to talk about omega three. Okay, uh, our scientist herself she mentioned this is very important. Okay, when it comes to when I was designing this talk, she said that this is one of the products that you need to have. Okay, because according to her, she said that uh, micro function, uh, microchondrial dysfunction, and free radical are one of a few key mechanism that lead to our cell being insulin resistant. So it's been ex extensively studied to reduce inflammation in this area. So that's how um, omega-3 come into the picture about helping our metabolic health. Okay, and there's been a lot of studies about how the inflammation can be reduced using omega-3. All right, and more importantly, it actually helps to balance high inflammatory oil. And a lot of the oil that we take today are actually very high in omega-6. Okay, like corn oil, palm oil, okay, all these things that are highly inflammatory. So these are, you know, omega-3 can help to bring it down and to reduce that inflammatory factor in our body. Right? So vitamin C is also another powerful antioxidant that can prevent other compounds from being oxidized. So a lot of oxidation is happening in our body. Okay, a lot of free radical going on. So vitamin C, uh, all these years, okay, it's been pretty consistent uh, that it performs this function very well. So I think everyone's uh, supplement lineup should have more vitamin C in their, you know, in their closet as well. And vitamin C can also improve the intestinal barrier function so that it will become very strong. It will prevent that leaky gut happening. It can be very strong and sturdy so that all the bacteria cannot go in. And vitamin C supplementation, interestingly, can also decrease blood glucose, DP, TG, and LDLC. I think the main mechanism is how it reduces the inflammation so that our blood vessel is not being attacked. Okay, it's also fragile and it can also help to regulate glucose and things like that. Okay, so it's a very interesting angle to look at how vitamin C and all this anti-inflammatory protection can help even our metabolic indicators. All right. So I've come to the end of today's session. All right, so I'm right on the dot. Huh? <laughs> I was a bit worried that it'd be a bit long. Okay, but looks like I made it in time. So the gist of today's presentation is very simple, actually. Okay, just to give you another perspective that increasing direct GLP-1 is not all to it. All right, which is important, okay? Because if you don't increase your GLP-1, we cannot have either one. We need to have both. Okay, if we only take the vitamin C and all those, it is not strong enough to increase our GLP-1 level. Okay, only few grade can increase our GLP-1. Okay, we have studies to prove that. But if we only have few grade, but we don't have all these other nutrients like vitamin C, our probiotics, it will not stay very long in our body. It can still increase, no doubt, but it may come down. Okay, because of all these gene structure that will potentially Destruct the GLP-1. And as we know, the GLP-1 is such a fragile thing. It only lasts for a few minutes. Okay? So, all the more, we need to put a bit more effort to care about it. Alright? And this is how we can achieve sustainable levels of GLP-1 for as long as possible. Okay? You need to have both, actually, to make sure that this will continue to be in your body to give the kind of effect that is best for you. Okay, so these are just some suggestions. Of course, uh, these are just suggestions. You don't have to take all three of them at one go. Okay, uh, it's up to you, but you should at least have one, okay, in your lineup. So FG and detox is something that I recommend everyone to do at least two to three times a year, um, preferably after a big festive season. Okay, we all kinds of junk. So that's when you have to do that, okay, because you know that uh, detox can help us to remove harmful toxin that can disrupt GLP-1. So I think it's something that we should have every now and then. Okay, this is the one that I feel that mm, if everybody can, you if you can't have all three, you need to have at least two. Okay, in your lineup that you're taking every day with, with this free day. Either probionic and uh, omega-3 or probionic and vitamin C. Okay, you need to have at least both of these combination. Uh, probionic is a must -up. Right, because it helps with our L cells, so uh, this is very important to supporting our GLP one. All right, and uni mate. Okay, this is also something optional that you can do because we have learned that 
uh, actually stress does is also another big factor of inflammation. So you need mate with all the chlorogenic acid and the other components is very helpful to increase our GLP-1 comes to mind and this is how we can reduce inflammation in our body as well. Okay, and it has other purpose as well. Right, so uh, just giving you all a new kind of insight to how you relate GLP-1 with some of these very important uh, crucial supplements that we have in the UCP. All right. Okay, so we have come to the end of today's talk. All right, so you all can, uh, if there's any questions, you all can write down now. Huh? Okay, but before we go into that, uh, it's a very exciting announcement, okay? So this is our next few great session, live training session, okay? So we haven't had this for some time. So we're going to meet physically in Singapore, all right? And we'll be introducing GLP-1. Uh, so all of you on this Zoom call, you are one of the first few people, okay, that's able to know about this. Uh, I highly encourage you all to come if you're around the area because Singapore, uh, they're having some pretty cool activity ongoing. So if you can come, I think um, it, will, it will benefit you a lot, all right? So do join us. There's some like refreshment if you're around the area. Okay, there are some really exclusive gifts in that day. So make sure you bring a friend along uh, to join alongside us as well. All right. So thank you very much. All right. So uh, y'all can ask any questions if you have about today's topic. All right. And um, yeah. Okay. So give me a moment and as always, I will, you know, get back to you. Okay. Very good. We have got question in a bit. Okay. So we have one question here. Omega Life. Wow. Got two emoji beside it. Uh, very nice. Huh? Three is resolved from time four bio seven is good. Okay, uh omega three is the normal one. Okay, it's the our 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 usual version of eight hundred eight hundred EPA and four hundred DHA the one. Okay, it's the same formula, managing formula, it's not resolved. Alright, so uh after much challenges, at least you're able to get something in. Okay, Thailand is the only one that's still producing this, and this is the one that we can get. Uh, bring into Malaysia. So, but it's still as good, all right? In terms of the potency, the effectiveness, it's still the same as what we have always had, okay? So, no doubts of that. And at least you still have this very important um, supplement to still boost your health, okay? Is 4 bar 7 good for GLP-1? Um, I believe all the all the bars life will have some impact to the GLP-1. Of course, bars life has been the most like, because of its fiber composition, but seven could also help with that. Yeah, I don't see why it wouldn't. But first, the gelling effect and all the other areas about reducing sugar, um, you know, it may not match up. So it's really, yeah, but I think it should also. But if we can take four biocides for bio seven, I think that's very good. One. <laughs> okay, if we can take four biocides in a day, why not? Right? Uh, I am actually now taking two biocides. Uh, before my lunch. I think that's actually quite effective. Yeah, it does really help to curb my hunger. So if you can, why not, right? I think there's no harm, really, if you can try four bars, like, for bio seven. Who knows, right? Okay, can, do you really recommend a gut cleanse every for six months? I have first heard it, I have heard first year, twice a year, and then every year, the gut cleanse will also can with the good bacteria. Okay, so Miss Kashin, give your question. Uh, yeah, actually, every every four months will be like three times a year. Okay, if you think that's too much, you can just be two times a year. All right, it's really up to individual preference here, but I would recommend the minimum is twice a year. Okay, at least one time you go two times. Um, our gut cleansing, right? It's not the other kind of detox, okay? Because I know there's a lot of detox program out there. Some detox program can be very scary. Um, they just drink, they only drink some, you know, they only drink some juice. And some of them, they have to do some homeopathic thing and they have to purge a lot in a very unnatural way. And I think maybe that's why people are very afraid to detox. They think you will stress the body a lot, like you're purging your body. Yeah, but Unicity Clear Start the Day is really different. Okay, I can promise you that. Um, there's a reason why we have three different products and why we don't have everything in one, okay? Because it has its um, specific function. So like the power way I told you, yeah, it can remove the parasite, uh, fungi, and also the toxin in our body. 
and uh, this is when we can also help to you know really help our body to move and have that regular um movement in our body. So it's something that I think is very important that we do uh, at least twice a year. Okay, so will this gut cleanse also clean away some good bacteria? Of course, when you do some gut cleanse, right, some of the good bacteria may also may also be eliminated. Okay, this is this is just part of it. Okay, our body can't selectively just purge the wrong. Some good will go off. All right, so this that's why this is only something we do for 30 days. All right, to just do a cleanse and because we have live fiber, so we're not too worried about that. The live fiber can still help to maintain that uh, intestinal uh, uh, gut microbiome data there. Microbiome, I'm talking about, okay? Gut microbiome, all right? And, um, and we also will replenish that with probiotic as well. Okay, so it really depends. Some of it will be gold, but it won't be harmful. Okay, in fact, the pros of detox is it outweighs so much more than some of these good bacteria that will be out from our body anyway. Okay, so I think it's not a source of concern, and you can always replenish with uh, probiotics you know, in the process. Okay, so I hope I answered your question. Okay, so um, if we don't have any more questions, then I guess this is it for today. All right, so please feel free to ask any questions. You know my email. You can always send me a message, okay? And we will be more than happy to guide you through it. All right, so with this, I hope that you have learned a thing or two. And yeah, let's try to improve our GLP-1 with all these basic supplementation. Okay, thank you very much, everybody, for your time. See you again soon. Thank you.